church.
John's Gospel. Gospel of St. John, chapter number 11. John's Gospel. You found that place, if you don't mind standing, if you're able. At the beginning of the word, John chapter 11, starting at the first verse. Good to be back in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 One more game. Amen. 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 Got that place? Say amen. 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 Need a minute? Say hold on. All right, the word of the Lord, it says, Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus, of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still, in the same place where he was. Then, after that, saith he to his disciples, Let us go unto, into Judea again. Amen. Thus ends we, grass withereth the flower faded, but the word of the Lord shall stand forever. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Okay. At this time, uh, it's time for us to turn our hearts, turn, turn your heart, turn. You can't turn your head because it's a spiritual thing we're talking about. You know? mm -hmm. And so, we we'll turn our hearts to God. So God can look down and see that heart. We can't see it. If we could see it, we could do it. We could know we can see it. Let's turn our hearts towards God at this time in prayer. Father God, look down upon this church, and Lord, not not being selfish, but there are other churches out there too. Not being self selfish, Lord, there's some lost people out there too. Mm -hmm. Lord, just look down and find the people that you're trying to save. Mm -hmm. That you learn in Sunday school, that that you you're not a vengeful God that you're trying to catch us catch us up in our our wrongness and things we do not right not like you. You're trying to you're making. I mean, you're giving us grace. Yes. Or you, you're giving us grace, trying to and mercy. Yeah. Just trying to get us, make sure we don't get lost, even though we have did things that we're not supposed to do. Lord God, just thank you for just being a good God. Like you said, you were, you were a good God. So I want to thank you. We want to thank you at this time for being a good God. Because had it been another way that the devil would been in charge, we, we would be in trouble. Right now, we, we have been given your grace. Thank you. And all we got to do is to accept it. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 After all the day you've been through, still got joy. Still have joy.
be God given. Amen? Amen. And He blesses us according to the intent of the heart as it applies to giving. Amen. And I know that is true because He said He loves a cheerful giver. Mm -hmm. And if you give according to the proper intents and motives, He will give back to you good measure, press down, run it together, and run it over. Amen. So, give it to you. Our church clerk, Deacon is Bob Ralph. Come now. Amen. Amen. The church announcement. This is the day the Lord has created. Amen. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And let's rejoice. And be glad. We don't have any visitors. Charlene Hogan, 
growing in God's grace. Ms. Denise Harris, financial, Sister Evangeline Council, and Katbosha Kendall, self-care and awareness. On Sunday, September 22nd, we have morning worship service. Our guest speaker will be Dr. Joanda Rollins Fells. We are looking forward to a wonderful celebration in the Lord, and your participation is very much appreciated. Yours in Christ, Reverend Martin L. Smith, Pastor. Ebenezer Baptist Church, Midland, Virginia. Dear Reverend Smiley, we would like to thank you for accepting the invitation to be our guest preacher for our annual revival services. The service will take place on August 14 at 7 p.m. We request that you bring a choir to render the music for the evening. Also, please bring your congregation. Yours in Christ, George Cargill, Pastor, Charlotte Swalter, Church Clerk. This morning in your church bulletin, please don't forget this coming Tuesday, July the 9th, there will be a combined choir rehearsal at 10 a.m. July 28th at 3 p.m., Pastor Smiley will be the guest preacher at the Union Methodist Baptist Church, that's in King George, Virginia, where the Reverend Donnell Howard is the pastor for their homecoming service. The combined choir will accompany the pastor. Dinner will be served. All members are encouraged to attend. August 14th at 7 p.m., Pastor Smiley will be the guest preacher at the Ebenezer Baptist Church, that's in New Virginia, where Reverend George Cahill is the pastor for their revival service. The combined choir will accompany the pastor. All members are encouraged to attend. Don't forget September 8th is a homecoming. October 6th at 2 p.m., Pastor Smiley will be the guest preacher at Mount Olive Baptist Church, and that's in Unionville, Virginia where Reverend Earl Bunbury is the pastor for their church anniversary service. The combined choir will accompany the pastor. All members are encouraged to attend. Pastor Smiley is asking, if anyone has need of anything, please, don't hesitate to reach out to him or one of our church officers of the church, and the church will assist as best as we can. Please, tell a neighbor, tell a friend, tell everyone, on our weekly services. Sunday school class starts at 9.45 a.m. Sunday morning devotion starts <coughs> at 11 a.m. Our Sunday morning worship service starts at 11.15 a.m. Our virtual Bible study is at 7.15 p.m. on Wednesday night. This is going to read on the church announcements. Thank you. God bless. <coughs> Have a blessed week. Well, <coughs> For the reading of the announcements, I ask that you all will come and yourself accordingly to all that have been read in your hearing. And uh, certainly we are delighted and happy to be in the house of the Lord one more time. And I trust that you had a wonderful time on last week. I understand Reverend King uh, gave a double dose of whatever that scripture was in Luke's gospel, talking about faith. So, uh, uh, God got this or something. Yeah, exactly. I heard a little bit of it, but uh, certainly we are glad that everything worked out and that we are back in the house of the Lord, back at, at the home front one more time. Certainly this heat has been something, hasn't it? Oh, yes. Amen. It's been, it's been something. You know, it's summertime, we expect it, and when we get it, when we get it, God give it, don't we? Because God, I went outside just, like, just for a little while, start fiddling around in the sun, and after a while, you can almost rain my t-shirt out, something like that. Try to hurry up, that's right, hurry up and scurry on up and get on back indoors. So, uh, certainly. God is still good, and uh, we are so grateful for all of your prayers. And it's good to see our drama back over behind us. It's good to see, amen. 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 Yeah. 
Thank you always. It's good to see you back in the house. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And, and, and Moses. Yes, Moses. 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 See, your name ain't hard to forget. You all know yeah. Moses. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, praise the Lord. It's good to see all of you in the house of the Lord. One more time. I think it's prayer time. Now we're going to pray time, Reverend Bill. You want to pray for us? So we're going to ask Reverend Bill if she could come on up. Give us an altar call at this time. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. It's good to see you all one more time. Yes. We serve a mighty, mighty God. Oh, yes. And he's just so good. Let us all stand now for prayer. Hallelujah, glory. Hallelujah. Our Father and our God, we come before you now just as we are. And God, we know that you know us better than we know ourselves. So God, right now, this moment, we just open up our hearts to you. And God, search us through and through. There's anything within us that's not of you, that's not according to your will. God, we ask you to take it away. Set us free, God. Fix, God, whatever needs to be fixed. Oh, God, instill in us everything that we need so that we can continue to go forth boldly each and every day, standing on your word, taking you at your word, because you're such a mighty God. And, oh, God, we know you to be a God who can do anything but fix. And, God, you brought each and every one of us through so many mountains, so many trials and tribulations. And God, we're still standing. We're still here, God. All because of you and your grace and your mercy. And God, we don't take it for granted for those of us who've been in the hospital, who've been under the knife, but we're still here. It's all because of you. God, we thank you. No mistakes. And we're still standing. We give you the glory today. We give you the honor today. We say hallelujah, glory, and honor to our most high God. We lift you up, God, because you said in your word that if you be lifted up, you said you would throw all men out of you. So, Father, we lift you up. Hallelujah, glory. We bless your name, Lord. We bless your name, God. Lord God, one, someone must fall even with a thousand tongues praising you at the same time. It still wouldn't be enough. So God, all we can say is thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, we praise you. We worship you. And we continue to lift you up. And God, you know the hearts of your children who are under the sound of my voice. Touch each and every one right now, God. Meet the needs, God. Meet God, honor, honor God, the desire of their hearts. Oh, God, can nobody like you can. So Father, we just want to say thank you for keeping us day by day. We thank you for our families, all of our loved ones, God. And Father, we lift up the bereaves right now. Oh God, especially God. Oh, the child's family. We lift them up to you, God. Their dad, the children, their dad has gone home. We lift them up to you, God. Be with them. Cover them all with your blood. You be their strength. Be everything that they need you to be so that they can continue to go forth in your name. God, we thank you today. We thank you for our pastor. We continue to lift him up to you, God. Continue to bless him in a mighty, mighty way. And continue to use him for your glory. Holy Ghost, just continue to saturate him with your presence. That every time he stands on his feet, God, that you would give him another dose, another dose, and another dose of your great anointing. Do likewise with his wife, God, our first lady. Bless our sister in a mighty, mighty way. Oh, God, just continue to hold her up. Oh, hold her up, God. Order her steps daily according to your word. Holy Ghost, continue to saturate her with your presence. Do likewise with all the officers and members here at Clever's Oh, God, set us all on fire today. Set us on fire, God. 
glory and all the honor. We thank you, my name, in Jesus' name. Amen.
God good? Yes, sir. Challenged with, it's in the word. Amen. Yes, it is. Praise. Sometimes we feel like our ditch is so deep that they ain't the word for it. But I promise you, I, I, I promise you, whatever you got going on is in the word. And just keep on digging, we'll find it in the word. And, then, and when you get tired of digging, sometimes God will just bring it to you. All right. What's up? Hey, man, it's in the word. It's in the word. It's in, it's in the word. In the word, y'all. That, that's thick. I don't know about you, but that's thick. I'm not real about that. Amen. That's good to know that it's all in there. I'm, I'm torn between two places, but I better go ahead on down the road a little bit. Um, John chapter 11. I'm going to keep, keep kicking this can down the road. John chapter 11, verse number 1. It says, Now a certain man was sick. John chapter 11, verse 1. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus, of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Amen. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he, he abode two days still. So Jesus, two days? In the same place where he was. Then after, the, after that, said he to his disciples, let us go. Let us go into Judea again. Amen. You may be seated. Mm -hmm. I interjected that little extra peace for a reason. And my subject today is that reason. I wanted to give it a little extra oomph because I want you to look at your neighbor, your family neighbor, and just ask the neighbor this question. Say neighbor. Say neighbor. Where is God? Where is God? When we need him. When we need him. Now, 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 look that neighbor in the eye and say it like you mean it. Now, say neighbor. Neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Where is God? Where is God? When we need it. When we need it. Amen. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Where is it? Where is it? Two days. He's going to hang out two more days. Now, he already got the word. My brother's sick. He already got the word. And he said, okay, let's just stay. Let's just hang out two more days. Don't worry about it, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Brothers and sisters, God is good. Yes, he is. Merciful and kind and all power belongs to him. It's in his hands. Not a little power, not some power, or a little fraction or portion, but all power is in his hands. And he can do what he want to do when he want to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
anyone who's a Christian and who's been around the church and in the church and know who God is, understand that he's omnipotent, he's omniscient, and he's omnipresent. What does that mean? That means he's all-powerful, he's all-knowing, and he's everywhere at the same time. Amen. That covers it all. He's got all the power, he's got all the knowledge, and he can be everywhere at the same time. Amen. But every now and then, we as humanity, we as people, come face to face with adversity. We will meet up head on with trials and tribulations in the course of our lives. Have I got a witness, church? Anybody ever had any trouble? Anybody ever had any trial, any tribulation? Have your life always been peachy and always been, no, but every now and then, the road gets crooked. Every now and then there's some speed bumps and some things we got to hurdle over or navigate around. Am, am, am I right? Every now and then you'll, you'll have problems in, in life and they have a tendency to to come to the place of overwhelming us at times. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, they have a tendency to overwhelm us and take us to a place of stress my, my, my. And, and, and anxiety. Mm -hmm. Trouble and sickness, heartache and hard times have, have a way of stretching us out. Yes, yes, and yes. Pulling on us, yes. wearing and tearing at us. Trial and tribulation have a peculiar way of moving us to the place of prayer. Mm -hmm. yes. Isn't that right? Amen. Sometimes the trouble is hot, it's so hot in your kitchen, the only thing you can think of is, well, I better go to God and do some praying. Amen. Sometimes trouble will drive you to your knees. Amen. Have we got a witness, church? Amen. Falling down on your bending knees. Yeah. And many times we pray. Hear me, church, hear me now. Hear me, hear me, hear me. We pray and we fall down on our knees and we do just like the hymnologist said. We have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about the things, the troubles that we have. But, but it seems like he don't always hear our cry. Operative word seems like. It just seems like he does not always hear the prayer and answer when we need him to. Sometimes we just don't. He, he, uh, we he just don't seem. To, we just don't seem to hear from heaven. It seems like heaven is silent in response to our prayer. Mm -hmm. You ever been there? Uh huh. We as a people, we we we, we uh, uh, and when this happens, sometimes we get a little frustrated. My Lord, my Lord. Have I got a witness? Yes, yes, amen. Sometimes we even we even become a little a little confused mm -hmm. because we hear the preacher say, "Pray and God will hear you. Yeah. Pray and God will answer you." Yeah. Am I right about it? Yeah. And see, and see, many times we take that those little phrases like that, and we turn we turn God into some kind of magician to where, okay, well if I pray, I can I can just pray and God's gonna make it happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, all right. Don't always work like that. Yeah. Have we got a witness, check? Yeah. yeah, because see, one of the things about us as a people, we are now in what we call a microwave generation. Yeah. 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 We got to have that thing right now. My Lord. Uh, Lay away, uh uh, ain't doing that. <laughs> we got to have it right now. Some folk get upset and get mad with God. Mm -hmm. And it's because He doesn't answer us when we want Him to. Mm -hmm. Some of us act like God got to move on our timetable. Oh, yeah. Have I got a witness, church? Yeah. How many of you know God moves by his own timetable? The Bible tells us that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. 
you ain't on God's level. You might as well come to grips with it. You're not on God's level. Matter of fact, if my memory served me right, the last person that thought he was mm, yeah. got thrust out of heaven at the speed of light. <laughs> Bible says his ways are not our, like ours, and his thoughts are not like our thoughts. Mm -hmm. God moves in mysterious ways. God moves when he wants to move, and not when we want him to move. Yeah. Songwriter simply just put it this way, he may not come when you want him, but when he comes, I want you to think about that. Think about your life in the past. When God showed up, it was right on time. Yes. Right. It may not come when you want it, but it's all. And I know that oftentimes we pray and labor in the Lord. And we spend much time on our knees. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we don't, we don't hear an answer from heaven right away. We don't hear, we don't hear from heaven and we begin to wonder. We begin to wonder at some juncture that old question, where is my God in my urgent need for help? Can I get a witness, Amen. Amen. We wonder, I know, I know, I know you might not say it out loud, but you begin to think, where is God when I need him? And I need him right now. Amen. All this trouble is in my way. I'm sick and lying on a bed of affliction. I'm in pain. Uh, good God, I just want to know, where are you, God? Back is against the wall that held hounds on my case. Here I am down in the lion's den over here, and, and over there I'm, I'm, I'm shut up in a fiery furnace with all this trial. Where is God? When I need him. I've been crying and weeping and moaning and groaning and praying and talking with the Lord, and still there's no answer from glory. Sometimes it makes the strongest of saints wonder where is hmm. Well, Have I got a witness to yeah. yeah. Sometimes the strongest of saints. And so it is that in the text we find the story of Lazarus who, Lazarus who was sick, mm -hmm. near the point of death. And the Bible said there was a certain man whose name was Lazarus. Now, many times in the Bible, we don't get the person's name when we see the words of a certain man or a certain woman or a certain place. We, 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 we are left to fill in the blank. But on this occasion, the Holy Ghost, the author, was careful to spell out who the certain man was. And there's a reason I'm bringing that up. The Bible says a certain man was sick named that. And I believe the Holy Ghost wants us to know that there's a great meaning behind this name, Lazarus. Latin or origin means God has helped, or simply God helps. That's what Lazarus means. And I want you to know that, that, that God told me to tell you to be encouraged in the fact that no matter what you're going through, God is a helper. Amen. 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 Yeah, it, 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 sometimes that alone gives hope. Oh, yes. To yes. know that even if he hadn't, hadn't answered yet, he is a help. Yes. 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 God will help you and he will see you through. Yes. The Bible says he's a very present help in the time of trouble, in the time of need, no matter what sickness, no matter what dilemma, no matter, no matter what the trial or the tribulation, God will help you to get through it. Yes. He will see you yes. to the end. Yes, he will. The Bible says Lazarus was sick. Mm -hmm. Many in the church, brothers and sisters, I know you look good, you smell good, you dress good, you, yeah, you, you appear to be real well. Many in the church got a little sickness going on too. Well, mm -hmm. Have I got a witness? Amen. All of us, if you, if you, in good God, strip it down to its bare bone, all of us. That's right. The church, all of us in that church house might not have the same sickness as Lazarus, but some sick preachers, some sick deacons, and some, in the church house, you don't be looking down your pew, just go look in the mirror, because every last one of us. Yes, well, looking at Lazarus' cross eye, you, you want to see a sick, a sick church member, you just go look in your mirror. Uh -huh. 
pull out your little pot, your little pot mirror there, whatever, that little makeup mirror. That's a sick person right there. Amen. Looking back at you. Amen. Amen. And that have physical sickness, but all of us suffer spiritual sickness. Yes. Yes. I know I'm right about it because the Bible says all have sin and come short. Short. Which makes us need of God. Yes, well, yes. Good God from my outside. All have sinned and come short of the glory. David put it this way. He said, he said Behold, I was shaping in iniquity and in sin, and my mother conceived me, letting us to know that we came out of mother's womb right. in a sin condition. Yes, yes. Yes. And until you find Jesus yes. and get it right with Jesus, you are going to remain in a sin-stained condition. Apostle Paul, said, Apostle Paul told us, Paul, y'all know what Paul said? He said, in that flesh that's wrapped around your bones, in my, in my body, he said, to well it, no good thing. Amen. In this church. Amen. There's a spiritual sickness called sin that plagues mankind. How we got a witness? Uh -huh. There's a, there's six, I done told you, there's six preachers in the house and deacons in the house and some choir members all well. sick up and some trustees and missionaries and some church mothers and sons and daughters and fathers. Well. Sick folk, oh. just like that. Some suffer hypocrite uh -huh. fever. Some suffer backbiters. Syndrome, you know, smiling in folks' face, talking bad and cutting them hard behind their back. Some have a gossiping complex. Bad case. Some of us have a bad case of fence traveler's disease. Holy on Sunday. Y'all know what that means? Holy on Sunday? That a dog come on. Fence right there. Fence back in on where you are. And you're in the church, you're holy. If you're in the world, Y'all ain't gonna pray with me. Check out some of the saints on Monday at the job. You'll see that the day just before they were holy then down. You get around the water cooler at the job and you don't know who that y'all ain't gonna pray with me. No. Be like you in there, who that? Who that is? Others suffer from, I just want a title. We have some that suffer from, a, mm, I hate to say this, but a hoochie mama disorder. But then we got some rolling stones up in there too. We got some prideful folk, high-minded folk, highfalutin folk, some arrogant folk, folk who are self-centered, all about me, myself, and I don't care about nobody else. All of this is up in the church. We, we, we worry about Lazarus, then uh, how about yourself? Mm -hmm. Tell your neighbor, check yourself. Check yourself. Now, you didn't say that. You say it like you mean it. Man, reach your teeth and say, check yourself. Check yourself. Got some sick folk in the church. And the Bible said, look what the Bible says. It said, Mary and Martha. I'm trying to slow walk this thing. Boy, I'm, I'm stirred up on the inside. I'm, I'm trying to hold it back. I'm holding that mule. God said Mary and Martha sent word to Jesus. That's what they tell us to go to Jesus when you got a problem. So they sent word to Jesus, inquiring of him to come. For he whom thou lovest, Lord, is sick. In other words, the sisters engaged in a type of prayer dialogue. You know, it's like a prayer dialogue. They communicated words with Jesus. That's really what prayer is all about. It's communicating with God, talking to him and hearing from him and listening for him to talk back to you. In essence, it's sending words to a receiver who is God and receiving a reply back. It's two-way communication. These women had an urgent issue that needed attention. The Bible says they sent words to Jesus mm -hmm. regarding their sick brother mm -hmm. who was at place of death. Brother was sick and they needed Jesus to come. They needed Jesus to come right now. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we say we needed him yesterday. Amen. Yeah. The Bible said, look what the Bible says. The Bible says, the Bible does not say specifically. 
that Jesus replies to the message with an answer and sent a reply back to the sisters right away. It doesn't, doesn't imply that. It, it, it doesn't say he sent words back to Mary and Martha about this same messenger. So one would have to assume that the women did not get an answer back regarding their prayer request. Mm -hmm. Giddy up. <laughs> In a sticky, tough situation. And the man that they have heard that can handle it, no answer from Jesus. Amen. And I can see him pacing back and forth, fasting and waiting and waiting and praying and weeping and mourning and crying. And every now and then he asks, did anybody see him? <laughs> had some cousins down south. In order to get to their house, you had to go down this long dirt road. It ain't even in my notes here, but it's just appropriate right here. Uh, and so when somebody visit their house, right, they would, they would, two, three of them would jump up in a tree. <laughs> and they would look way out. And then daddy yelled at them. So I can see Mary and Martha sending one of them down there. Anybody see him coming? <laughs> Pray. Waiting for Jesus. Anxious and stressful. Can't feel a pulse. Their brother dead. Therefore, in their minds, he's pretty much dead. And, and, and I can hear him say, Well, where's Jesus? Where's our brother? Where's this, this, this man from Galilee? who I know he can fix it, say, and I can hear somebody in the background talking about Jesus somewhere over there dragging his feet. Mm. Can I get a witness, church? Yeah. Yeah, it's always, now listen, it's always a naysayer. Yeah. That's going to add a little bit to the narrative. Yeah. Am I right about it? Yeah. They're going to make that thing, they're going to spruce it up real good. Ah, oh, Jesus ain't coming down here to see y'all. Y'all uh -uh. ain't nobody. <laughs> Y'all know somewhere, somewhere in the background, somebody said, y'all might well forget about Jesus. He down there dealing with something else. Man. Go on, bury your boy and be done with it. Man. Have I got a witness, church? The Bible says Jesus intentionally delayed his coming. Yes. Trying to make it plain, my brothers and sisters. He said in verse 4, he said that, that, that this sickness is not in the death. Jesus, see, Jesus knows stuff. I already told you he's omniscient. He knows stuff. Jesus knows this man. This sickness here wasn't going to take him out. Amen. We don't know that, but Jesus knows. Yes, all right. All right. That's like Jesus sleeping on the boat while the boys all stirred up. Because he knows this little, little storm ain't nothing here. Yeah. But I promise you, when you're going through a storm, it feels like something, don't it? Yeah. So, so he lays. So this sickness is not in the death. See, some of our issues and trials and troubles uh, come upon us uh, for the glory of God. That Jesus might be glorified, that God might be glorified. And many times, the storms, the trials, the tribulations are allowed in your life to strengthen your faith and shape your character. Sometimes it's just preparatory for another level that God needs you to go in and you need to be ready. this before and it makes me scared somebody say I don't want to hear nothing about no God I get scared for them my skin crawl when somebody say that good God from my he delayed his coming because he knew this was nothing to this it's just for the glory glory of God the glorifying of God the time these storms allowed to strengthen your faith and when your faith is built up and when your character is strengthened, God gets the glory. See, without faith, the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. God wants you to have strong faith. And that's why songwriter said, my faith is built on nothing less. Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. I'm about to come home, y'all. 
The Bible says when Jesus heard about Lazarus, he intentionally delays two more days. Mm -hmm. And I know these two sisters, Mary and Martha, mm -hmm. was wondering, where is Jesus? Yes. Where is God when I need him? And I stop by and I say, don't worry about where he is. Uh -huh. Just know that if you pray, he's on his way. Help is on the way. Yeah, yeah, tell your neighbor, help is on the way. And I know he's on the way because the Bible says weeping may endure for a night. But joy cometh in is on the way. Yeah, yeah, and God might not show up on the scene when we want him, but, but when he shows up, I promise you, it's good timing. It's always right on time. Don't you worry about the delay. Yeah, yeah, matter of fact, a delay is not, a delay is not a denial. Just keep on keeping on. Yeah, and that's all the story is about. Just hold on. I just want to end here as I take my seat with this little story here about God's time. One day a young man just wanted to quit. He said, I want to quit my job. I want to quit. I want to quit my relationship. I want to stop my spiritual journey. I just want to quit life. He said, stop world and let me off. I'm done. The young lad went, went to the woods with one of his, uh, he went to the woods to have one last good talk with God. He said, God, can you give me a good reason not to quit? Yeah, God answers, he answers this boy that surprises him. God said, look around, he said. He said, do you see the fern seeds and the bamboo seeds and the plants? Yes, the young lad replied. God said, when I planted the fern and the bamboo seed, it took, uh, I took very good care of them. I gave them light, gave them water. The fern grew quickly from the earth. Its brilliant green covered the floor of the earth and uh, yet, yet nothing came from the bamboo seed. But I, I didn't quit on the bamboo. In the second year, the fern grew more brilliant and more vibrant and plentiful. Again, nothing came from the bamboo seed. But God said, I didn't quit on the bamboo. He said, in the, in the third year, there was still nothing from the bamboo seed. But I simply would not quit. God says. In the fourth year, again, there was nothing from the bamboo. Uh, good God and the fern was just spreading like wildfire. Yeah. But God says, still, I will not quit. Then in the fifth year, a little tiny sprout emerged from the earth. Compared to the fern, it was seemingly small and insignificant. But about six months later, the bamboo rose to over a hundred feet tall. It has spent the first five unseen years growing roots downwards. The, the, those roots made it strong and gave it what it needed to survive. Yeah, I, I would not have given, uh, I would not have given any of my creation a challenge it could not handle. God said to me, did you know, my child, that all this time you have been struggling you have actually been growing roots. I, I, I would not quit on the bamboo, nor will I ever quit on you. He said the bamboo had a different purpose than the fern. Yet they both made the forest beautiful. Your time will come, my son, my daughter. God said to me, don't give up. A delay is not a denial. It is in God's time. I left the forest that day with hope that that these words can help you see that God will never give up on you. He may not come when you want it, but he's always right on time. And never regret a day of your life. Good days give you happiness. Bad days give you experience. Both days are essential to life. So don't give up, you just keep on keeping on. You see, good days make you happy. Happiness keeps you sweet. Trouble keeps you meek. Trials keep you strong. Sorrows keep you human. Failures keep you humble. Successes keep you glowing. But only God can keep you going. God is so big, he can cover the whole wide world with his love. But he's so small to where he can curl up inside the place of your heart.
could have been dead. We could have been, we could have got a telephone call this morning. Could have been the other way. All of the church, maybe there's one. Who is not saved? Let's start there. If there's someone in here who is not saved. And if you really don't know what that means, then chances are you're not saved. And, and the Bible tells us that before you leave this earth, you need to be saved. The consequences of not being saved and die would result in eternal hell and damnation. I want to make that as clear as I can. Because people are dying. Young and old. Some take it for granted that, well, maybe there's not a heaven and there ain't even no such thing as no hell. And the devil, the devil will have you think that until you die. And if you die and you're not saved, there's no chance for redemption. When you come, if you're not saved, and give your hands. Just whisper in the deacon's ear and say, I want salvation. You don't have a church home, you want to join up with Clever Lope, or perhaps you want to renew your membership to refresh and renew your covering with the Clever Lope Baptist Church. Is there one? That's very necessary as well, your covering. Where you gone? See, the days are gone for just coming to church. That, that, that's not where it is. Some think in their minds that just coming to church satisfies everything required for salvation. But it's more to that. Is there one? Will you come? If you don't want to step out, will you do me a favor? And will you call or text or, or, or just inquire with me or one of the deacons? Let us know where you are. Now I can tell you something that the Bible says, and that's probably what I need to tell you. The Bible says, don't be ashamed before men down here. Because he said, if you're ashamed of men down here, and I hate to put this to you like this, but this is word. He said, I'll be ashamed of you. Is that one? I don't want you to miss salvation. My whole life, 24 years of my ministry right here at Glover's Open, the whole idea is that none would be lost. Salvation. That's the rudiments. God bless your church. You may be saved. Oh! 
We thank you and we bless you. Thank you for what eyes have seen, what ears have heard. But we thank you for what hearts have felt concerning your word. Allow us, O oh God, to be strengthened by this word and be encouraged to know that you're not going to leave us, but you will eventually be there in your own time. Some have waited 15, 20 years. Others have waited an hour, two hours. Because God, you have purpose and you have meaning to everything you do. So Lord, we're just going to keep on blessing you and keep on praising you. And we're just going to keep on being about your business. Continue to bless this church one by one and name by name. May your grace, love, fellowship, and sweet communion of your Holy Spirit rest and abide with us henceforth now and forevermore. Let the church say, That's the truth.